these are the Sea Island red peas, which is a type of cow pea, or what's most commonly known as a black-eyed pea. But we love using it here a lot for its historical purposes, and also it cooks really quickly and has a really great flavor. And so in the cassoulet today, um, it's going to add a real burst of protein and some nice structure to the, uh, uh, it, it's going to fill in for the beans in the cassoulet. So the, uh, the meat for the, the lunch today is going to be some lamb sausage that comes from our lamb on the property. Uh, it's house made by our butcher here uh, on the property. Uh, it's in natural casings and uh, really great seasoning. Uh, but the great thing about this time of the year too is that um, we have fig trees on the property. The fig season is long gone. All the figs are now either eaten or they're in jam. So what we've got now is uh, plenty of fig leaves that are still left on the tree. They're only going to be back on, or on the tree for another couple of weeks before the cold weather comes. So what I've done is taken these fig leaves and soaked them in hot water. You can just use the hottest water from the tap uh, or you could uh, water the temperature that you would uh, um, make your tea with. Uh, you just soak them in there for you know half hour or so and that softens the leaves up. So what I'll do is put the sausages in the skillet to get a nice sear on them and then over top of those I will lay some fig leaves. And so the fig leaves will kind of steam. So you'll still get a sear because the skillet is good and hot but you'll get some steam and then the heat from the, uh, the skillet is going to uh, really impart that flavor of the fig leaves into the uh, sausage. So the, uh, the sausages are now ready. They're good and uh, seared. Got some really great flavor. What we want to do now is just take the fig leaves off. You discard those. So unlike grape leaves, these really aren't uh, the best for eating. So uh, we're just getting the flavor out of those. So the sausages are now ready. We'll plate those up with the peas. And while we've still got this nice fat in the, uh, in the pan, I'm gonna add a little more grapeseed oil and I'm gonna crisp up some shiitakes. We grow shiitakes, uh, mushrooms in the woods here uh, on some logs and uh, we've got a nice little flush happening. So uh, I'm gonna crisp some up so you'll have a nice little crunchy bite to the plate. So these peas have been soaked overnight and then um, have been simmering in fresh apple cider. Uh, there's a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary, a uh, little bay leaf in there, and uh, these cook quite quickly. Um, you may want to cook a little bit longer if you're using a, a bigger type of bean or a butter bean. Um, but the trick is to use an unsalted liquid to cook your uh, peas or beans with, and then add the seasoning right near the end of cooking. Uh, otherwise, the peas will get kind of tough and uh, a little more chewy than you'd really want them. All right, now the uh, field peas are just a few minutes from being done, and so I want to salt them now. So that's a good bit of peas, going to feed a lot of people, uh, and there's a good bit of broth in there too, or pot liquor is what we call it around here. And so we want to make sure that we give it an ample bit of salt, so a good bit of salt in there to really bring that flavor out, because since they were simmered in cider, uh, you've got a, uh, a real sweet kind of pot liquor. And so we want to make it sort of sweet and salty at the same time. But rather than have a real soupy, kind of watery pot liquor like this, I want to make a little bit of a gravy. And so I'll add some good whole buttermilk. And this is some local buttermilk from a small farm nearby. And what that will do is make a really nice creamy gravy for the field peas. Now when this is served, normally you would put uh, you know, some cornbread or some hoe cake or johnny cake with it and by sopping up all that liquid in there um, that will add some uh, crumbles uh, to the gravy like in a true cassoulet normally would use breadcrumbs the cornbread crumbs will do the same thing so this is about ready to eat